Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming. Uh, we're here to talk to you today about VNF onboarding and why it's difficult and some of the strategies that we're looking at to try to resolve some of those problems. Uh, I'm Vanessa Little. I'm the director of NFB Ecosystem Architecture over at VMware. And I'm Kayla Loeffler, and I'm from a company called NetRounds, and I'm in the channels and marketing team there. And for some of you who may know, NetRounds is a software-based active testing and monitoring solution. Uh, we are a VMware partner, and we uh, do have a VNF, so we're a VNF vendor. We have a virtual test agent VNF. It's kind of like a virtual probe. All right, so we are all living today in a very diverse ecosystem, and that brings with it a range of very diverse challenges. We've got VNFs, we've got Mano vendors, we've got Vim vendors, and everyone has different onboarding requirements. Um, each VNF is like a snowflake, as Vanessa likes to say, and this is a good thing. Um, we have a lot of VNFs with different functionalities, a lot within the same function even, but with different uh, methodologies and there's no way to standardize the way that we are uh, creating the build methodologies for these. Um, but we can build support to have the unique functionality deployed in a way that is more portable and templatable. Um, and the Mano stacks, these are all written very differently. There's comes with them different strengths and weaknesses. And standards for the information models and data models do exist, but they're a little bit lackluster and they're constantly evolving. So again, we have problems with standardization. And in the end, there's no industry agreement on how to handle this. Um, how are you going to handle the, the VNFs in terms of packaging, templates, uh, infrastructure requirements, and even performance KPIs? And then even within the OpenStack family, all the Vim vendors bring something different to the table. Um, we need a way to build common definitions of services uh, that are more agnostic for all these VNF vendors. So these challenges today can kind of fit within three different um, verticals. There's a lack of standards, a lack of automation, and a lack of collaboration. Within the standards bucket there, all the orchestrators are unique. And within the orchestration family, we have service orchestrators, resource orchestrators, sometimes even orchestrators for orchestrators. <laughs> and then we have all these divergent open source communities. Some are more like frameworks, some are more like solutions, some are being productized. But we have kind of a divide and conquer mindset right now. We need to have more of a one plus one equals three envir environment developing. And then again, there's no common data model for the VNFs and service definitions. A lack of automation, we hear a lot about APIs these days, NetConf and Yang APIs, REST APIs. Um, but again, it's very manual. You need to go into CLIs and make changes for all these VNFs, and it's a manual process. And as we know, manual processes can introduce human error. And about over 70%, I think, of um, network outages are due to manual efforts and human error. And then finally, a lack of collaboration. Uh, as a VNF vendor, and I'm sure there's a lot of other VNF vendors in the crowd here, it's very challenging to make sure that we're validated across all these different hypervisors, orchestrators, and VIMs. And if there's any updates, the customer asks for something new again, it's very challenging to make sure in real time that you're validated against all these different vendors and environments. Yes, so, so what do we do about it? It's very hard to onboard these VNS. I think that's a, a global agreement. Uh, so there was really two approaches to this about a year ago. One of those approaches was everybody should just align behind one unified standard. And if we make one standard, then everybody's just going to adopt it. And we determined that that assumption was egregiously false. What we ended up happening was there were a number of different data models and different standards that were emerging through different orchestrators and different, different open communities. It's starting to come back around and, and converge a little more with some of the things coming out of Etsy and uh, the IFA groups, particularly around Sol 1, but it's not quite there yet. And so we still have this, this problem of all of these different VNFs needing to be onboarded in different ways with these different VINs and different orchestration vendors. So VMware got together with Intel along with some, uh, a few other groups and we decided to build an open source community around building tools to speed VNF onboarding and make it dead easy for people who aren't necessarily developers, people aren't, who aren't familiar with being able to generate Yang models in a text editor, people who aren't able to make orchestration models, people don't even know what Tosca is. So we, we developed a tool called VNF onboarding that started to tackle some of these challenges. Now, because this is an open source community, we have a roadmap that's this long. 
and a code base that's this long, but uh, we're, we're working into the right direction and we're starting to, to take some of those necessary steps to make it very easy to onboard a VNF, especially for people who are new to the NFV, they just want to um, start onboarding a few VNFs and play with it to see what the current capabilities are before they make that long-term decision with their company to actually adopt a full NFV stack platform. So if you want to play with it, um, what we've done is we've built uh, a, a UI front end and posted it online at vnfonboarding.com. Uh, and we have a GitHub if you want to join the community and start uh, either submitting feature requests, free, uh, submitting bugs that you may have found in playing with the tool, or joining the community and actually developing new modules and new support for your own tool. Um, so now with the time we have left, I'm going to give you a very quick demonstration. So this is the tool at vnfonboarding.com. Um, you create a user account with the sign up button that I'm not gonna walk us through right now because it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, then you log in. And what you're presented with is a web-based wizard that allows you to start generating a very basic VNF blueprint or template that you can onboard into a number of orchestrators. You can choose either VCloud Director or OpenStack as your VIM. Here we'll do an OpenStack one. And we've, we've started to build out this list of compatible outputs. So we've got a Tosca 1.1, that's the simple Tosca model. Um, Riftware is an open source orchestrator, so their version 5.3 is supported here. Two versions of Cloudify are supported here, and my personal favorite, open source Mano 3.0. Soon, soon to also include 4.0, which just released yesterday. Um, then you select a, your VNF type. This, this list is an arbitrary metadata list where you can just, uh, this is more for your own reference so that as you build all of these models, you have this metadata embedded in it so that you can search on it later. The VNF name is whatever you want to choose to name it. So we're going to call it Vanessa Router, which is mine. <laughs> and the VNF description, I want to call this a V router for Vancouver. And the image file is, this is where you define the image name or the UUID of the image that you've already uploaded into your orchestrator. So let's just call it IMG, one, two, three. Um, because now depending on which version of the orchestrator output that you select, different features will become grayed out or available. So because we're doing OSM, you don't explicitly define a flavor here, but instead you, you define what the resources you'd like to allocate to this particular VM are gonna be and you fill them out in this wizard, and you click continue. Now we define the number of network interfaces. In this case, I want three, so the management NIC, I'm gonna call that management. The interface type I'd like for that to be, let's deploy it in VMware integrated OpenStack, because that's the one that pays my paychecks. Um, <laughs> so we'll choose VMX net three. Uh, the other NIC, let's call this one egress. He can be, he can be an SRIOV interface. We want this one to perform really fast. Uh, and then ingress, let's make this guy uh, a VMX Net3 interface. So we continue. Now we can set some each EPA features, and again, depending on what your, your VIM and your um, orchestrator combination are, there are different features that will be available here. Because we're using OSM with OpenStack, uh, we can set these parameters. So let's set the latency sensitivity to high um, and make it pneumo aware. If you have a cloud init script, you can upload it here. We're gonna skip this step. Um, but this would, this would embed whatever cloud init script that has already been developed for that particular VNF so that when it boots up, it can do its post install config. And so here's a summary page that shows all of the parameters that you, you've already set. You have an opportunity to go back and make corrections if you notice any boo-boos in here. And then you click generate. So now the package has been generated by the web farm and this, this bit is interesting here. You have the option to upload this to a public Git repository. The reason why we added this feature is because we want to encourage the actual VNF vendors themselves to build these onboarding templates to have the specs and the onboarding scripts that they believe you need to have to be able to upload them. That way, people like NetRounds can distribute their, their packages the way they know it should be deployed in your, in your stack so that you don't have to sit there and play with it and try to figure it out and call tech support and say, hey, NetRounds, where's your cloud init script? It's already available uh, in the open source repo. So then you'll be given a, a link to it there. 
So then you just download this, this package, and it builds you a little zip file that you can then open. And inside there, because we used, because we used OSM, it built both a network service descriptor and a VNF descriptor, because you need both to actually deploy it. Uh, these can be uploaded directly into OSM, along with your image file, and you can deploy it as is. But let's just take a look at what's in there. Um, so if you had uploaded a cloud init script, it would be placed in this folder, but we skipped it. Um, you can also set things like icons, um, and there's image reference file, but here, if you uploaded any additional scripts, they would be in here. But here's the, the YAML file. Oh, why can't I pick this? There we go. And so here's our YAML file that's been generated. Um, to describe this particular VNF. And without knowing how to code a line of anything, you now have a functional uh, package that you can use to deploy uh, into your open source orchestrator. So that said, we, have, we can take one question. Mm -hmm. We have prizes. Whiskey stones. Ah. Questions, comments, suggestions, high fives. So a multi-VDU VNF. So that's coming in the release that we're releasing next week, which unfortunately we couldn't get in the can before the OpenStack summit. But um, yeah, that was the biggest requirement when we first released this tool a couple months ago was, what if my VNF has more than one VM in it? We heard you. It's in the next release. Um, so that should be posted in a week or so. But keep an eye on the GitHub for when it gets updated, and it should be in the next few days. Anyone else? You can download it yourself. You can modify it to do what you want. It's also, uh, it also has an API built in. So if you don't want to use the UI, if you want to automate it, it has a, a full-featured REST API that, that you can call it from another application. What we were really thinking when we built this tool is not so much that people would use the UI, but people might integrate it into their existing OSS system so that it can start building those templates on the fly as they need them. OK, I think with that, we're out of time. So thanks, everybody. Thanks.